So we are laying down the characteristics of your circular functions. So last time we spoke about the amplitude. No, we spoke about the period. And in particular, what B, what B does to the period of your function. Now we go to the amplitude. So when I first heard the word amplitude in a math class, I kind of know something about it. Okay, so it's not a totally new word to me because, because I am familiar with sound systems. Okay, even when I was a kid, I was familiar with sound systems and one of the electrical or electronic gadgets in a sound system is an amplifier. So an amplifier is supposed to amplify. It is supposed to, to make sound sound louder. So that is the purpose of an amplifier. The amplitude of a periodic function is the absolute value of half the difference between the maximum and minimum values of the function. So this is how you compute for the amplitude. And for your simple sine and simple cosine function, we know that the maximum of uh, sine and cosine, the simple sine and simple cosine functions, is 1. The minimum is negative 1. And so their amplitudes is this. In general, if we are given a function defined by this, y is equal to a times sine of bx, the amplitude of such functions has to do with this one. Okay, It has to do with a, and in particular, it is equal to the absolute value of a. Now, why is that? Why is that? Well, we know that the, uh, that the range of your simple sine function, okay, this one, is this interval from negative 1 to 1. So when you multiply a to that, the new range is going to be this, a times this interval. And so if we are to compute for the amplitude, it's one half times the absolute value of, of the maximum minus the minimum. And so it's going to be the absolute value of a. So when we are looking for the amplitude, we pay attention to the coefficient of your sine and cosine functions. When we are looking for the period, we are paying attention to that coefficient of x, and we call it b. Okay, so what does the amplitude do to your simple sine function y is equal to sine of x? Okay, so let us see, let us see, let us see. Again, this is the graph of your simple sine function. What is the value of A here? A here is equal to 1. So, the amplitude is the absolute value of 1 or simply 1. Okay, so what does, what does A do to the graph of our simple sine function if A is 1 half? Okay, so that is the graph of 1 half times sine of x. So our new maximum is positive 1 half, okay? So our new maximum value is positive 1 half or simply 1 half. And our new minimum value is negative 1 half. So what then is the amplitude? The amplitude is... The amplitude for this function is a, or absolute value of a, which is equal to 1 half. What if our a is equal to 3? What will it do to the graph of our simple sine function? So you kind of know what it will do. It will amplify. And so, guess what? This is the graph of y is equal to 3 times sine of x. So our new maximum now is 3. Okay, so this is our new maximum. Max is equal to 3. And our new minimum is equal to negative 3. So what is the amplitude for this one? It's going to be... So what does A do to the graph of your simple sine or simple cosine function? 
Well, maybe you can still remember uh, this thing about B. What B does to the graph? So B produces either horizontal contraction, okay, horizontal contraction or horizontal stretching. It can uh, contract or stretch your graph horizontally. But with amplitude, okay, so you can now see here the effect of A on the graph of our simple sine function. It either contracts or stretches the graph vertically. So that is the effect. Okay, when you say vertically, okay, so, so it's the up and down, okay, up and down movement of an object. It's vertical movement. So that is what A or the amplitude does to the graph. It affects the up and down movement of your function. It can stretch it vertically or it can compress it vertically. Whereas with B, okay, with the period, it affects the graph horizontally. It can either stretch it horizontally or compress it horizontally.